Okay, my name is Bob Schiffler, I'm President of the Library Board, and I want to thank you for coming to this, our third workshop related to the new Geneva Public Library. If you have not signed in, please do so before the evening's over. We'd like to have a record of everybody that's here tonight. Also, before we get started, I'd like to introduce uh, some people, other people that are here. Other board members, Pat Lord, Paul Conorado, Zach Kraft, Mark Adams, Ellen Schmidt, Dana Hintz. Uh, Library Director, Christine Lazarus. <laughs> From Studio GC, Pat Callahan and Craig Meadows. And last but not least, our moderator, Michael Mackey. <laughs> So this is the third workshop. At the first workshop, we talked about some basic architectural principles, talked about the uh, evolution of library architectural design. At the second workshop, then, we started getting into a few more specifics relative to the Geneva Library. That is, the neighborhood, the site, and so forth. We also looked at some designs for other new libraries and talked about the challenges that they were facing in the uh, objectives they tried to achieve with those designs. So tonight, so tonight you've all been waiting for, you're going to start to see pictures. Uh, tonight you're going to see four design studies, possible exteriors for the new library. Now this is not intended to be choose A, B, C, or D, but each one's got some different styles, different features, and so forth, and we'd like feedback on what you like out of each design and so forth so that we can then take that, feed, that information and roll it all into a final design. So again, we've gotten a lot of great input from the first two workshops. We anticipate uh, the same tonight, so feel free to speak up. With that, I'll turn it over to Michael. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> so we've had our first joke of the night with a three-time attendee. Is this going to be an advertisement for a mattress? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so, um, as Bob said, we've had three different uh, presentations. The first one we talked about critical components of architecture, um, important timelines, and library history. The second one we went over site analysis, plan relationships, and building facade. And the one tonight we're going to be talking about commodity firmness and delight. And again, these. These sessions have been designed to get input from the public. Um, so at certain points, we will stop and ask people for their input. Please uh, speak up and uh, let us know Let us know your feelings. Um, who am I? We, um, I'm Michael Mackey. I've uh, retired in, in November. I live about two doors in from the borderline of St. Charles and Geneva. I live in, in St. Charles. Um, but I, the last 17 years of my career was spent designing libraries all over the Chicago land area. And this is for people who haven't been here before. Could I have a show of hands of who's been to the, some of the other discussions? Okay, quite a few people. Anybody here who this is the first one they've come to tonight? Okay, great, great. There are, um, the, the past uh, presentations are on, on the, uh, the library website. You can go and access them if you if you're so inclined. Um, but otherwise, I think this will be self self-contained discussion. Basically, this is something I've done over each time. Um, the 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 flow of a project from mission statement through strategic plan, go through a building program, and this project has already gone through a successful referendum. You know, the project is going forward. Um, we are at this phase here. At this looking for public input before the project goes formally to the city for review and, and, and uh, approvals. So, so the first, first talk that I gave, we talked about Vitruvius, who was a Roman engineer and architect, and he talked about three components, critical components in architecture commodity, firmness, and the like. And what those things really relate to is um, commodity is how does the plan work? Does the building work efficiently? Um, is it, does it work as what it's designed to, to do? Firmness has to do with structural um, stability, um, but also with materials and with the systems that are, that are in the building. 
um, being of high quality and, and uh, durable. And then delight has more to do with the exterior appearance of the building and is it good to look at. And so the first thing we want to talk about is commodity. And um, this is aside from one of the earliest presentations. Commodity really has to do with um, the development of a program, so what's going to be in the library. And then once we know how, what things are going to be in the library, how do they relate to one another? So the, the sort of uh, hierarchy of spaces, what, how big spaces are going to be, how they connect or don't connect to other spaces. Um, and that's a very critical part, not only for the user, but for the staff as well. So those the three things that are typically associated with that building program, the site and floor plan. And then I have included estimated costs. And I think that that's also a critical component, of course, of any project. But we'll put that in with the this idea of commodity as well. And so I was wondering if we could get Christine to talk a little bit about the development of the program for the project, the thoughts that went into her thoughts that went into it, that that programming, and then how they, the staff has been working with the architect, the, the staff from the library, with the architectural staff. Thank you, Michael. And uh, this was a surprise. So <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. To talk about the program. So. <clears throat> it, was, it was a couple minutes review. And, uh, as Michael talked earlier, there was a slide that showed where we are in the design process. And one of the things was the strategic plan, it showed very early on. And, and I did get the five minute heads up, so I, I grabbed my copy, which has truly been our working document for everything we've done for the last couple of years here. And it outlines four initiatives, which are flexible space, convenience, innovation, and community connections. And those same things have driven the building program uh, that we've been working with the architectural team for as well. So in flexible space, how do we use space flexibly? How do we look for double duty of everything that we're doing? So for example, a youth program room, how can that also be perhaps a uh, craft room after school? So in the morning, it might be for story time for preschoolers. In the afternoon, kids get out of school. They can come and use that same space. The other thing we've been looking at with convenience is how do you look for creating the most browsability with your collections. And one of the slides Michael has up here is create, consume, and connect. And what we talk about is people come to consume things at the library. But we want to be able to make that really convenient for people and make our collections browsable and interactive and, and give you this opportunity to have delight as the uh, mattress added. <laughs> 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 So, for example, and I just want to give this one example, um, I don't know if any of you use our DVD collection regularly in the adult area, but I, I'll be the first to admit that it is, I'm sorry, I'm looking at a staff person right here, it is so poorly displayed, it's just awful, and it's a space issue, that everything is just spying out, you, you, it's not browsable, you can't have fun trying to find things that, that may delight you, that may want to incite. Uh, you know, inspire you to go home and, and learn more. And so we're looking at how do we use shelving, how do we use new arrangements, how do we do those things to make space that's really engaging for all of you. And then our other area of, of our strategic plan looks at innovation. And some of the conversations we've been having about that are things like, um, actually it was the conversation yesterday. We were talking about the management team. We have three iPads in the back of youth services tucked away in a corner. They're tethered to a table there. And we're talking about how American Academy of Pediatrics wants you to, to engage with your child in screen time. So not put your child in the corner and, and you know, go, go play with the iPad back in the corner. And so in our current configuration, that's not really very possible. But in the new space, and this might go to the connection piece. How do you bring those families together? Could we have, say, an iPad dispenser? Or could we check them out? Could we have an opportunity for you to take that same iPad not tethered to the desk and go sit on a nice comfy couch with mother and child or father and child or grandparent? And, and how can that be a fun experience for connecting in the library? And then lastly, our uh, initiative and our strategic plan is community connections. 
And that has so much to do with why you come here, right? You want to engage with people. You're, you're all here in this room tonight together, or you come to the library, you come to programs, or you talk to us at the desk, or um, you know, maybe a knitting club on Carla is it on Monday night. Okay, the knitting club on Monday <laughs> night, but those connections. And so how do we do that better in a new space? So where would our service desks be placed? And, and how does that impact the rest of the layout? And how does that impact the, you know, as you lay out the floor plan, how does that impact the exterior of the building? So we've been having a lot of conversations about this and then bringing these conversations to our board, to our architectural partners, and, and engaging with community members like you to talk about what is it that you're looking for and how can we serve you to the best of our ability in this new space. So um, perhaps if, if there's something else you'd like me to touch upon. Well, I think, I think you know, in terms of the working relationship with the architect, I think that um, uh, your group, the staff, has been very, it's been a very hands-on and interactive relationship. In what he's terms. trying to say is that we're really big pains in the butt. And 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 to their credit, our architectural team has really been fantastic at, at making the time for us and engaging in, you know, what is this, our community meeting number nine, I think, when all is said and done and, and making the time for all of you and for all of us so it has been a partnership we view all of you as our partners in this as well so it's, you know i guess there wasn't the thank yous but thank you for that right. Right. Okay. we do appreciate it great so yeah i think that's that's really what thank wanted you, to say. And the, the idea is, here is that you know there was a time when an architect would um, get information go back to their office draw it up come back and say okay here it is that's not the way this project, project or this process has worked, as you see it here in terms of the public meeting, but also with, with the library staff and with the library board. Well, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell that I was visiting a library not too far from here that's relatively new. And uh, everywhere I went on the tour, you know, we'd get to little things. we say, well, that didn't really work out the way we wanted it to. But that's what the architect said we should have. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. And it wasn't that back and forth. It wasn't this engaging process. So this has been a, a really valuable, uh, how long have we been working together now? I don't really even want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it has, so. And, and thank you for being a part of it as well. Yes, so yes. Thank you, Mike. Okay, good. So that's the, the one component about how the program and how the building gets put together. A lot of input from the staff and, and, and the uh, board as well. But then there's, you know, how does the building then fit this series of plans very from a, the, 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 uh, the, the big picture in terms of Geneva down to, the, down to the site. And I'm going to ask Pat to come up and talk a little bit about some of the ideas uh, in terms of the, the site organization, the site plan, and, and um, the ideas of how it fits into the pattern fabric of Geneva. So as we talked last time, for those of you that are here, we really talked about this kind of civic corridor that's kind of ad hoc created um, and the ability to extend the civic corridor to the old 6th Street School property, the new library site. And really wanting to make sure that it's not just a, a building that sits along uh, a sequence, but really is engaging and creates an opportunity. So part of our discussion has been obviously to have that kind of pedestrian connection so that this truly is a walkable corridor uh, related to, to the civic buildings in town, whether it be City Hall, uh, the post office, the King County government's courthouse rather. Um, and so we really wanted to ma maintain that connection. And then obviously the development of the site plan is really important. We had talked last time about trying to create a site plan that provides not a framed kind of suburban view of a building where you kind of look down rows of cars and you get the full view of the building, but having, having all the views around the building being softened by the landscaping and creating uh, a parking lot and a, and a traffic pattern that allows the building to kind of be buffered by that which is in front of it to kind of bring the scale down but also put it more in context. So here's the site plan as we've uh, developed it. Again, to orient you, this is 7th Street here. Franklin on the uh, on the south, Campbell on the north, and then 6th Street on the east. 
But the idea being just to some some uh, to maintain a public park in the lower or southeast corner, uh, relocating it from the southwest corner, bringing it closer to the neighborhood, um, having a book drop and a, and a material pickup lane, to make it convenient for patrons to instead of getting out of your car like you have to do now and run across the uh, the curb and, and drop a book. Uh, there'll also be convenience inside, so if you do park and go in, you'll be able to, to drop a book there. Uh, but also then to be really treat the Campbell and the, the 6th Street side as really a, um, a segue into the, the residential area. Really wanting to have it be welcoming, uh, have a plaza space, uh, open reading space, and have the building do the same. And if I can just jump in, I, I think we forgot to introduce Chris Landert in our opening remarks, who uh, has been working with us on this on the landscape, landscape plan. plan, too. So thank you, Chris. So again, very quickly to orient you kind of positionally to the building. Um, so book drop here, drive up uh, book drop and material pickup, pedestrian entries. Uh, a pedestrian entry here on the corner of 6th and Campbell. The main entry to the library would be here off the parking lot or the parking lot entry. Obviously parking for, uh, we've got about 79 spaces right now. Uh, ingress, and e primary ingress and egress would be off of 7th Street and then uh, uh, ingress and egress off of um, Franklin. Uh, we're showing kind of an outdoor reading garden or reading area here. Uh, this one will be much more interactive because it'll be connected to the building. You'll see in some of the building elevations how we kind of have the inside and the outside happening simultaneously. And then uh, outdoor library programming would be uh, in this area directly outside the children's uh, on the first floor, the first level of the library. So um, we have, this is the, the current uh, floor plans. Now you'll notice some of the building schemes um, generally apply the, in this, exist, this floor plan to all the schemes. There are some minor adjustments, but, but for the most part, um, first floor is children's and meeting rooms. So children's area here, uh, technical service staff area here, meeting rooms here, open lobby space here. On the, uh, on the second floor, uh, the adult collection, and then small meeting spaces along the north. And you recall uh, there was some concern by some of the neighbors on the north that they were concerned about people looking into their homes or looking at that side of the property. So what we did was we buffered that view for, for spaces that need windows, but that can have windows structured at different levels so that you're not staring across the street into the neighbor's homes. So that, that buffer zone is really uh, made up of small group meeting rooms, meeting spaces, and, uh, and building core support spaces. And then the upper level uh, is really uh, the staff spaces, you know, staff offices and, and, and the department uh, and administration. Small question. Uh, when you said creation spaces, uh, you're talking about stacks. I'm sorry. Where are the stacks? Where are the books coming? Here. Oh, that's, what I, that's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah. Creation space would be, um, you know, um, uh, whether it's you know music creation, video creation, those kind of spaces or maker spaces, here and here up on, the, on that level, and then down on the lower level here. Yeah. Right. No problem. Any other questions on the plans? There's um, more density actually to the west of that intersection than there is to the east. A lot of townhomes and a lot of more residents. How are you going to connect to the west side? How are you going to bring the residents across Campbell Street? the property. I'm, I'm not back, sure back up one more. Uh, is there, he's asking if there's a, a special way to walk across. So there's one more. There's townhomes to the west. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about the connection from 6th to Campbell, but how about the townhomes directly across the street here? There's a lot of townhomes over there. Yeah, right. And residents down James. Yeah. Right. So how are we connecting to the townhomes and all the, the residents to the west of the well, are, are you referring to walkers or drivers? Walkers. Pedestrian, don't you know? Yeah. Well, they're, they're walkers. They're within right. 200 yards of the property. Right. And I, I think there's a sidewalk. Well, and part of the improvement of this site, if you, look, if you go to the city's comp plan, there were some um, um, high importance um, pedestrian ways, sidewalks that were not installed on this end of town. Um, and 
one of the things that we are going to be able to do on, on this site is actually take care of the, the necessary and high and high importance um, uh, pedestrian ways around the perimeter of this site. Um, we really don't have the capacity to go past that, but, but certainly with crosswalks and, and the existing walks, this would be a, a really intended to be walkable. We just wanted to demonstrate the connection to the Civic. Right now, there's no crosswalk from, <coughs> there's a crosswalk at James, but there's nothing at Campbell, and there's nothing at Franklin, and there's... So I understand it's not getting you across 7th right here, but if you were to cross at James, there's a sidewalk that continues, continues, and this is a, a very recent addition by Chris Leonard here to add this sidewalk here. Uh, and Roger was one of our folks who helped us realize what was missing and, and bring it across here so that it helps with that pedestrian connection from the west. But we can also open it beginning a conversation with the city as to how do we approach that concept that there may be walkers. It's kind of outside the property line, so we can only do so much. So I encourage you to kind of you know make it known that you're interested in that so that when we go broach the subject with them, it's a little more than just us telling them we think they need it. I got I did write a note though. So Thank you for the notes. Thank you for the comment. <laughs> okay. So in, in terms of commodity and to, in terms of the workability of the various plans, I think that um, the architects have shown there's some validity and, and it has been verified by the, by the director as well in terms of how the plans are working, how the site is working. Um, it, seems, it seems to fit the, the, the needs. So the second component we talked about is firmness. And that really has to do with the building systems and structural system as well. And uh, when we were here last time, we talked about that. You know, is the, is the envelope going to be durable? Um, are the, the engineered systems that are within the building of high quality and, 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 and durable? And so, Pat, did you want to talk a little bit about sure. the various uh, engineered systems? So, in addition to the architect, there's a whole series of engineers on board for the project and they have different specialties and they will be taking care of different aspects of the, the engineers. So, you know, thus far we're, we, we're, we're exploring and expanding options for both the sustainable uh, design to the, to, the, to the building, but also to the site, you know, recognizing, you know, stormwater management, um, leveraging underground uh, detain, detention, um, bioswales, et cetera, for water filtration to, for the quality of water. Um, trying to ensure that we're looking at the building comprehensively. There's been some questions, you know, is it going to be LEED certified or is it going to be LEED accredited? Is it going to be LEED silver? Is it going to be LEED gold? And really, I think the, the, the library board hasn't been presented with the options yet. We are using a sustainable approach and leveraging the USGBC guidelines for uh, sustainable practices and things that would go inside of a building, whether it be geothermal, LED lighting, um, recycled material content, all those great things. Um, the, there is a cost implication to, to advancing and securing LEED accreditation. Our objective is to ensure that we're take, using those sustainable practices and having a high quality inviting building that, that leverages natural light and all the great things that people like in space. But um, our ultimate objective is to ensure that the operational efficiency is the highest it can possibly be. And the only reason I draw that distinction is because there have been studies done in the past few years that LEED accredited buildings consume more energy than their counterparts. So we don't want to, we don't want to, we want to make sure that we, we share with the board their options, but we want to make sure that we're not just trying to obtain points and a certification at the expense of creating a, a building that it costs more to run or operate. So our objective is to do that. We're certain that if we do that, we will be able to get LEED silver at a minimum just based on, on good practices. Um, being what? Um, LEED is Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. U.S. Uh, Green Building Council developed a, a protocol to um, get buildings LEED accredited or LEED certified. And so we are all LEED accredited professionals, so we do this on a, on a daily basis. But So we're really looking at a, a lot of different uh, aspects of the building electrically, landscaping-wise, um, and technology-wise to ensure that we're really treating the building with kit gloves as it relates to sustainability, 
but more importantly, long-term operational needs. I have a question. I don't know whether you answered this last time, but um, is there a uh, are there accommodations for possible expansion upward? For this building? Mm -hmm. um, at this point, we have made no accommodations. I mean, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> we're not quite there yet in terms of maybe. Would, would you make a statement that for the neighbors, especially along Campbell, the original design said very clearly, we're not going above the height of the former school here. Will you make a commitment for the next century? We will not put a third and fourth story on this building somewhere down the road. Um, we are actually uh, maintaining the height of the building within the limits of the old 6th Street School. Right. That's a commitment we made last evening to the, to the Historic Preservation Commission. Work. And all the designs you're going to see tonight maintain that height. And, and I'll jump in and say, too, that we have benchmarked the size of this facility up through growth predictions of 42,000 people, and our current population mm -hmm. is 30,500. So there is a lot of room for growth here with the size that's being presented here at 57,000 square feet. And with the flexible space initiative, I think that also helps us look for opportunities to always make sure that we're able to transform rather than just build on. So it's something that we're all very comfortable with the size of it at this point. But that's, a, that's an important point. It used to be that, you know, in the old model of, of uh, library needs and programs, you would have stack areas of a certain size and they would just keep growing computer areas that would just keep growing. This model that Christine is talking about is much more sort of looking for the synergy between um, the internal workings of the building and, and, and affords greatest possible flexibility in the future to make those things happen. Yeah, it's kind of specific, but will the building be commissioned? Yes, it will be commissioned. I'm sorry, sorry. I, I, I don't <laughs> it's uh, commissioning is a is a um, uh, an extra set of eyes that comes in and ensures that the mechanical electrical systems are already that that they're being operated and they were implemented and, and installed per specification to make sure they're running optimally, basically. Mm -hmm. So, I think we feel pretty good about the building in terms of the. Uh, the, the uh, engineered systems. So it brings us to our last component of that triad, the, the delight in architecture. And the, the architects have put together four different schemes to take a look at tonight. Um, they, in the meantime, since the last meeting um, with the public, they've met twice with the uh, HPC, with the, uh, the, the city staff. Um, showed them the work that they were doing, got some initial feedback. This has not been a formal review, um, much more informal, but it, just to make sure that, that nothing that, that they were showing was uh, setting off any al alarms to people. So the, the aspect of delight has to do with, with beauty. Um, we talked about in the, the first talk, you know, that um, the, you see the true in man based on the proportions of, of, a, of a person. That, that somehow you could find this, this what is beautiful. Now beauty also has some um, um, aspects or some, you know, in, in terms of current thinking and current aspects of beauty. Um, what is beautiful now may not be beautiful in 50 years or 50 years ago may not be beautiful now. But um, making the best effort um, to supply something that is, you know, meets this triangle and, and also has a level of beauty. And so the, the four designs are going to be presented. Um, I think Pat's going to come up and talk about maybe the first two, and then Craig will talk about two. Um, but you get a s sense of the old map of Geneva. Geneva here, and you know, a series of views that, that any one of these might be in that place. Can you advance the slide once? Sure. <laughs> So um, one of the things that when we went to HPC uh, the very first time um, that was acknowledged that they, they wanted us to investigate more and understand more completely the 7th Street Spur. How many are familiar with the 7th Street Spur here in Geneva? Um, so we spent some time with the Geneva Historical, at the Geneva uh, History Museum and uh, were able to get some artifacts and some imagery 
So what we're sharing with you tonight are a couple of those pieces, and I want to go into a little bit of that detail. So um, <coughs> this is the, uh, the library site here. Uh, this goes back to 1940. We're actually able to obtain um, the uh, 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 Sandborn Paris maps uh, back to 1923 so we could really understand what's happening. But essentially, this area here has always been a lumber yard, or whether it was William Howell uh, Lumber and Fuel, whether it was Geneva Lumber, or, um, um, and then this area here has always been a manufacturing facility, ironworks. Can you advance the slide? Here? Stop. You said that was a school, but can you show us where Seventh Street or Sixth Street is? Seventh Street would be right here. Okay. So, the, so State Street at the top there. State Street at the top. Right. right. So basically, along the west side of Seventh Street was a rail spur that came up, uh, up and actually went past uh, and into St. Charles. And so there was kind of an industrial corridor here where the spurs would drop off materials, pick up materials, and then go back out the mains. Um, so this here is, uh, was uh, John Wheeler Lumber and Fuel. Um, this building saw a couple renovations with a, a, so an added third story monitor at some point. We'll see some images later. And then, and then Michael. And then this was the, uh, the modern steel plant that made the uh, kitchen cabinetry, steel kitchen cabinetry and sinks integrated. Um, I've come to realize after doing some more research, it's quite a lucrative business. If you have some, you can sell them for quite some money. Uh, but, um, but this was the actual manufacturing plant. Um, and it was right around 1974, 1976 that these, these kind of went away. Uh, the townhomes were constructed um, and uh, eventually, I'm sorry, the, first the, uh, the, the uh, uh, retail center was, was built on 38 and then this became the townhomes. So up until about 1970. 74, 76. Uh, one second. So along the top here, I want to I share this view with you because it's the only slide that has it. We were able, to, or we were fortunate very early in the project to do um, kind of some visual laser mapping of the entire property. And we have an actual mapped laser view of Campbell Street looking from the library site to the north. So this is, this is 7th Street uh, right about here. And then uh, 6th Street, right about there. So this is the actual view of that elevation. Um, and we, we have some of the homeowners right here, right? <laughs> right on the end. All right. Here, here, here. All right. Is your house lean? <laughs> Still strapped down. That's great. Um, so the first scheme that I want to share with you is what we're, we're calling the bridge. We didn't name them 123 ABC. We gave them all names. So. Um, but this is the first scheme. So again, just an aerial of the site, just to kind of fixate you or fix you on that. So again, that was a 3D view, but these are this is the uh, modern uh, steel plant, and this is the uh, the library site. Thanks, Mike. So what we did was we we took kind of by order of magnitude all of the aspirations that we heard from everyone, <coughs> and the larger the word, the more times we heard it. Uh, so forward thinking seems to be something that was hitting us in the, fore in the forehead, uh, but obviously creating some kind of wow factor, uh, a cultural connection, spacious, safe, so on and so forth. So this was just kind of our guiding principles as we were trying to come up with design options that, that, that responded to, to some of these aspirations. So the bridge scheme really looked at a, a, a series of different things to come up with not only material, uh, um, options, but also some um, forms that represent what uh, uh, Geneva really is in terms of what it has in terms of opportunity. So um, we looked at uh, brick on this one, terracotta, and part of the terracotta by explanation is if you look at the Kane County Courthouse, while it's a brick building, they color the mortar. So when you look at it from a distance, it has this very monolithic look to it. And so rather than trying to replicate that, I think there's an opportunity to to use a, a terracotta material to, to um, represent that. Um, this is another version of terracotta laid in a, in a uh, almost a shingle-like format that would represent some of the older homes that have that kind of shake uh, appearance throughout the community. Limestone uh, being a, a, a component that we think is something we need to incorporate. The question is how much. Um, and then 
We're show, showing some wood slat in this scheme. Uh, this scheme and the fourth scheme have this wood slatting. The idea here is that the wood slatting would serve two purposes. Number one, it would be leveraged to, for sun control on the, on the south elevation. Uh, and it would be leveraged for privacy control on the north elevation. Um, so we'll show that. And, and really, the inspiration behind that was um, the, the Cannon Box Company um, and the, some of the buildings that were there along that corridor kind of used that vertical wood slat, some of those industrial buildings. Uh, so that was the inspiration. And then another on this particular scheme, uh, leveraging some metal panel uh, as kind of a, a, a nod back to the modern steel uh, and modern kitchen or Geneva uh, Kitchens um, uh, manufacturer. You know, we mentioned stucco and its counterpart in poured concrete. There are a lot of stucco homes around there, and I could see that among your options. We have four. Oh, I see. This isn't for the This home. is the first one. Oh, okay, okay. I see. This was, Correct. that wasn't an introduction to all. No, this oh, is okay. just this option. So, uh, a couple of additional inspirations here were, you know, the lighthouse on the river being a beacon. You know, it was there to make sure that no ships would crash. <laughs> I realize that sounds funny, but it was important to someone at one point in time. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Fabian, I believe. <laughs> I know. Uh, and then obviously, you know, there's various bridges in town, and they've been there for, for, for quite some time, but they, they begin to kind of give us some palette of, of shape and form. So this... This option is really kind of a study on form and material. Uh, Kane County Courthouse, of course, and one of my uh, uh, thoughts on this particular one, and it shows up on most of the other schemes, was, you know, we have to remove that tree, unfortunately, because it's right where the building goes. And so, tr so doing something uh, in the design that would help us understand and represent what that tree is, uh, we'll share with you. So these are, uh, this is the, the Campbell Street view, so this would be standing on the northeast corner of Campbell um, and 6th Street. Uh, we haven't developed the plaza in these images, we're really just trying to get the building situated on the site. Um, so this would be the public plaza and the public uh, or pedestrian entry. Uh, this would be represented, this form here represents the two-story uh, um, staircase that goes to the second floor, so that you'd be coming in at at grade and then going up or going down because remember this portion of the building is about seven feet into the grounds not, not unlike the old six feet school house. and then to the to the east uh, the existing or I'm sorry the meeting rooms kind of drop in scale uh, again closer to the residences and this area here serves as and which is this area represented here an outdoor reading deck accessible from the inside, so outdoor reading deck with obviously an outdoor plaza all kind of blended into one. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute, but you can see here brick and then the, uh, the metal panel. So on this side, um, this is a view if you were this person here looking down towards 6th Street you'd be standing in the middle of Campbell looking in that direction. So this is the home on the corner of 6th and Campbell. So we wanted to make sure that we shared kind of the vertical height of the building so you can see that the, the first level is actually into the ground and built into the ground. The upper level does not exceed the 6th Street School property but also is set back from the edge. Um, and then we also wanted to demonstrate the wonderful um, landscaping that ComEd does around there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see it from the ground, but they really do a good job. What we're talking about that's a wonderful job. The uh, the two streets, the egress street off of Seventh Street, and also your book drop that that road off of Campbell Street is going to be determined by the placement of the telephone pole or the electrical poles that are in there. We are going to treat the electrical poles. Uh, and the intent is really to take the electrical poles and put them underground. That's, that's right. yeah. right. They would help. Yeah, they're they're beautifying the area. Are yeah. leaning poles? Yeah, yeah, they all. This one's straight. There are a few that were leaning. You're from that, from that angle only. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
so again, this is the north elevation, so the pedestrian entrance off of um, uh, uh, Sixth and Campbell. And then, um, so this is what I want to share with you here. So this here in this scheme was really kind of a, a gesture to the old Cottonwood. And these, and, and, and it is done in, in many of the schemes, this side of the building is where the upper level meeting rooms are and the lower level is the children's area. So the idea with here is to try to leverage some of the metal panel and have more of a playful exterior that would allow those things to have framed views that look in a particular direction but that do not look directly across the street at the neighbor's houses. Um, again, these are all in concept. Uh, What's that shaded part? Sorry? The shaded part. Here? Beneath the, the upper sort of push three windows. Yeah, that area. What's that? This here? Mm -hmm. So the idea here is to use metal panels to represent foliage and to leverage some of the... Are, uh, they, are they translucent or you can see through them? No, there's, there would be slotted windows in this particular scheme. So there would be a, a solid panel. The, um, at the end of the last uh, discussion, there was a, a gentleman that came up and said, you know, can we relocate the, the World Columbian Exposition biking ship from Templar, to Templar Park to whatever? <laughs> and so... I don't know that we can necessarily achieve that, but you know, in this particular scheme, we wanted to give a little bit of a gesture on the west side, uh, so you'll notice that the upper level kind of prows up. A little bit. So. I'm sorry. Is that shaded the wood slats part of the wall, or does that come out part of the wall. feet? It would, it would be. You'll see it in the next in the next view a little bit better. Actually, if you go back one view, it might be easier to see that. So that one makes it look really busy. This would be more of what it would actually look like. It would really just be metal panel that would be, and the walls are actually at, at a slight angle, so we're directing the views out, the, out of those mediums away from the neighbor's homes. So they're like home this way? Well, they'd be a, like a little triangular shape that might redirect. Yeah, I think that this is hard to read. I think these are sort of undulating playfully um, and then supported by a... By, by columns below. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of the idea of a tree house, very sort of playful along that facade. It, it adds some, some depth and relief, some shade and shadow, and also provides special places on the second floor. Thank you. And then one more after that. So the, the west elevation. Um, would ha actually have, the, there would be a wall in front of this that would actually have a vertical uh, screen for ivy to grow uh, because this is the kind of a little bit of the service side of the building. Um, so that 7th Street, that 7th Street side would need to have a little, but this would be essentially the mechanical space. And then this is a, a window that overlooks this one here on this corner that is part of the adult reading space, the quiet reading room on the second level. Wanted to have some, you know, window seats and have that protrusion come out to make that space a little more special. So what's that surface? What is what surface? The whole surface, uh, that. This would be brick, proposing brick, and then the wood slats in between on these two. And then this would be a, the metal, a flush metal panel. On the south elevation, um, we, we really took the bridge form and created um, more opportunity for there to be outdoor seating on the same <coughs> level. But also, this is the program room for the children's, and this provides a little bit of a canopy out for that outdoor uh, 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 program area as well. So this this begins to you know leverage a little longer uh, bridge form to be able to create some of those more special spaces to the south. That also helps control the sun because it's a relatively deep mm -hmm. canopy that gives us some some sun control. And then this would be the the slatting that would allow us to. To control the south exposure sun, and then the main entry to the library would be off the parking lot here with meeting rooms on this side. So that canopy is cantilevered out. This cantilevers out about about 12 feet. It's out, mm -hmm. so the yes. archway comes out. So it's about it's it's almost almost halfway down in the arc. Yes, the floor is about yeah, the floor is about. Right yeah. Okay, that's it. Right, so the, yeah, this area here would be, and, and one of the things that, that you know, we know, we know that the fireplace is very important to the community, mm -hmm. but I think this, this particular scheme affords a, an interesting opportunity. Uh, we've, we've judiciously leveraged the limestone uh, at the entry, so there's a, a small 
band of limestone here and a, and a strip in the middle. Mm -hmm. And the idea would be that, the, that there would be a possibility of having an indoor-outdoor fireplace in this location um, to allow it to be ex extended season in the late, early spring and the late fall. Is that sliding comparable or what? It's not in. The slatting is actually, you know, have you ever been to Boston City, Chicago that has all that wrapping on it? You know, all the advertising over oh, yeah, and you're sitting in the bus and you look outside and you can see just fine, but nobody can see you in. See in. Mm -hmm. the, the idea would be that this would also give us an opportunity to have that solar control. People from the inside could still see out, but at nighttime the building would have a different character because you'd begin to see the windows kind of glowing from behind the screen. So it allows a, a little bit of a transition. You talk about real wood? No, it would actually be a synthetic product. Yeah, a synthetic product. But we still get plenty of daylight through that and through the top. Yeah, because it's gap. It's gap, and then and then and the panels are perforated. So how many different kinds of materials do we have here? Well, in this particular scheme, stone, uh, terracotta, metal panel. So. That's the end of the scheme. I have one question. As a patron coming up from the parking lot, would it be confusing to see? I mean, the archway is nice and everything, but to me, that's like the focal point of the side of the building. And, and that would that would draw my attention that that would be the entrance. You know, would something very predominant or something at the what? Me looking at that entrance here, I'm sort of confused. Where yeah, I'm going. These, you know, when we, when we look at the, can you go back to the three D view? Um, when you look at these in flat elevations, sometimes it's hard to get a, the depth of it. Mm -hmm. But you know, the the signage of the library okay, well, okay. and the direction that the parking lot okay. is really drives you to this entry, and that's okay. consistent with all of the schemes. Okay. Isn't there some fencing around that cantilever thing? Yeah, exactly. There's there's a yeah there's an enclosed area. Right. So, any other comments on that scheme? We have three more to get through, so I'm, but we're happy. We want to take the comments kind of as they're coming to you, so and we'll have an opportunity at the end to kind of look at all of them and talk about all of them. Okay. So this one uh, we're calling Embrace, and and this one you know leverages terracotta, uh, ivy screening, um, some limestone, and then we're using a little bit different way to control sun, and that's fritted glass. So it's glass that has some fritting on it, some pattern, some texture. Uh, it's a little more high-tech way to control uh, solar gain. Um, so Michael, I want to check. So in the lower right of this diagram, the concept is that you know this really is a kind of a stone or a, a hard wall that goes around three sides. Um, the idea would be really to contain the water, the river. That's kind of how the, this this developed in terms of concept and then really open up the south elevation with natural light coming forward. Um, go ahead, Michael. It'll be easier to explain the elevation. So this would be the view from Campbell and 6th Street. Uh, and you'll notice here, again, this wall wraps the building and then has kind of a cascading uh, uh, terracotta uh, facade on the, e on the east side that faces the neighborhood. Uh, but again, creates this, these public plazas uh, with, with more landscaping. You'll see the stone wall here, the stone wall here, and then we have a break in the wall, not unlike the previous scheme that at the location where the, the cottonwood was, because again, that is the meeting space, so this does open up this portion of the building. We wanted to try to make sure that we were able to take advantage of the northern light, which is the best light you can have, because you don't have to worry about the sun. We get great natural light without having the Yes. So this would be the so the so in this case the pedestrian entry is not directly off the corner, but it's just slightly around the corner here. Uh, that helps us on the inside, but this box serves as the containment for the the stair that goes up uh, from up and down from both levels. Uh, this actually allows you to look into the uh, the um, uh, lobby spaces, both up and down, and then this is the. The actual uh, meeting space, meeting groups. So the north elevation again, we we open up the third floor uh, with glass, so you kind of get this 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 setback of glass for um, of, of north light, 
and then this is the meeting room area we just talked about, and then the balance of this of the wall, the embraced wall, is, is a series of punched openings, and then here is the uh, the public canopy uh, for the entry, pedestrian entry, and again, same view uh, with respect to building height. And then the west elevation, um, you know, the, the, the stone wall uh, wraps around and then really we begin to really open it up on the south elevation. So this is really a lot of glass with some sun shading um, and creates an opportunity here to take and have a, a slight break in the, in the form. So this line right here represents a, a piece of the building that kind of comes out that creates an outdoor reading deck uh, in this particular scheme. So on the south side you'd have this kind of opportunity to have on the up from the upper level access the adult reading area um, an, an outdoor reading deck. And all that is a spread of glass? This is yeah and this would be that for the fritted glass with some some sun, sun control. So we really take advantage of the, of the southern exposure in this particular scheme. And then the, the tower element serves as uh, the, the marker for the entry location which is again consistent in all the schemes and then here is the uh, the meeting rooms on the, on the right hand side of this particular elevation. And we, we will we will turn these all around. This is basically what you're seeing right. and what we can talk about. I find more. that actually easier to read. Okay. Yeah, we have a question over color. here about color. Color. Oh. We're not talking about color tonight. That we could be here for three weeks talking about color. Yeah. No, and, and, and the reason is uh, you know, at HPC last night we presented this this exact presentation we gave to them last evening. And they asked the exact same question, and we said well, it's just premature to talk about color because mm -hmm. there's sure. so many more iterations we need right. to go to to finalize the design. And once the design is finalized, then we can start looking at material palettes and color, etc. And that's why this went to grayscale, just to give you, you know, the, mm -hmm. some idea of depth, scale, scope, uh, texture, etc. That makes this hard to read, though, because you don't really, you can't really identify where the parts that stick out are. Yeah. Can, can this help me bring this embrace design? Where does the ivy wall kind of fall? So can you go back one? I'm sorry, I'm going to miss this. Yeah. We had an opportunity on the north elevation here, and then we haven't shown it just for clarity, but the south elevation would, where the glasses would have some breaks with some ivy locations on this elevation as well. We just, we just haven't shown them just to kind of give a, a look. Yeah, it, it, you know, all these schemes, they are still being developed. You know, you say, you know, how about vert you know, verticals? You know, that's part of the next, the ongoing study to get those that balance correct. We've spent four weeks with these. You're seeing them for the very first time, so sure. there's. The, we appreciate your comments, um, and they're, they're certainly not being represented as final building designs. These are really still concepts. You just got a couple of materials in there. Sure. Yeah. I speak this is stone with the terracotta. So no, the stone and terracotta, right? Right. transparent. I have a home in the historic district that has a lot of ivy on it, mm -hmm. and I'll speak to you people later about the heavy maintenance of that. Yes, the yeah. yeah. intensive maintenance. And the library's got it. They yeah. should be aware of that. I was about to say, uh, we, we're in a building with a lot of ivy, okay. so. Uh, There's, th there are right, systems today different ways that, that actually are designed to enhanced mm -hmm. ivy that do not attach themselves to the building. They're actually just freestanding or offsetting structures. Mm -hmm. Is there something that rests the, the, the spread of the ivy? Yes, yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so with this, I'm going to this over to Greg for the other two schemes. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm presenting the last two schemes. Um, I get my name is Craig Meadows. Uh, this scheme is uh, called Books. So the general kind of design concept of this one is that there are portions of it where the windows are kind of regularly, oh, excuse me, irregularly kind of vertical. So they look like books that are kind of stacked up on a bookshelf. Or at least that's is the inspiration. So this material-wise, this is terracotta, the judicial use of ivy. 
um, on this particular one, Freddy Glass again, and then Limestone, and then uh, kind of using that irregular rhythm along the windows. So the part that we're kind of talking about as we look at this, and this is kind of more of a rectilinear building, the, the portion right there, and it is kind of the start of the book. So you'll see in a lot of cases, the books are kind of like bounded by the limestone in this particular case, or a mass, so that they have kind of a framework so they're not just like books leaning on a shelf without bookends. Get it? So, so that's kind of like the premise of that. Um, same basic orientation of the building. There's you know, not much changes as far as what access points are and everything else in this scheme. So same kind of premise that on the 6th Street side, it steps down as you kind of, because it's the residential and meeting room step down, large two-story volume space or story and a half for the um, stair area. Entry is again kind of on this corner right here, and then the building steps down. If you go to the next slide, you can begin to see that those windows are irregular. They're not random. We're aware that the more random picture, window sizes we have, the more expensive it gets, but there may be two or three versions that we irregularly place. Um, those are then kind of housed and protected by this wall. So kind of like a similar option last time had this embrace going around. This one kind of the books are kind of held precious around the building by the limestone around it. Uh, the ivy on this particular one is in this corner. Uh, that is being used as a screen in front of uh, the louvers for mechanical units in that corner. So that kind of hides it so you're not looking at big giant louvers on my end. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, yes. yes. What do you keep meaning when you refer to terracotta? I mean, it, it's already we've seen, we've been told it's not gray as in your drawings. But what, what do you mean by terracotta? So terracotta is kind of a material that is a almost as a compromise of sorts between brick and concrete. So it's like a tile product that's kind of hung on a framework. You can get it in any range of earth tones for the most part. Um, but it's a, usually a very flat, smooth finish on it, and those are the ideas that we're looking at. But the terracotta, in a lot of ways, you can get extremely detailed as well. Is it the colored panels? No, it's not usually. It's usually kind of dry stacked. Say that again, sir? Is it the colored panels we were shown? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's one of those. Mm -hmm. So as you come around the west elevation, same kind of regularity as the last one with the kind of clean lines going around. Larger open area, kind of where the quiet reading area is on this side, to kind of begin to open up more glass because that begins to come around and set the mood as it comes around and picks up the books. And then again, this one picks up a lot more glass in this area and a kind of a marquee entrance kind of is protected. Well, you can ask all you want. Design books. And okay. I, I, what's bothering me is there's there's no rounded edge. So I guess I'm thinking about is could any corner without expanding the cost and not taking it just any corner, even if it's just one, be rounded. Like there could be ways of incorporating different, like um, one of the options Pat had with the the kind of the. The tree houses, those were a little rounded. Yeah, but I'm just talking about literally a corner of the building because there's that, that it, I found an image of a, like a tower, mm -hmm. like a piece of a tower. So if wherever the tower was going to be, if that if one edge was just rounded so it had a radius as opposed to a it would soften the elements of that building hugely. Yeah. As just soften it. It was just yeah, amazing. So the idea of softening. So this is on to the next one. Any questions on this particular one? Let's jump into the other side to put my notes around. Yeah. Yeah. Far from Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, this is the fourth option. Um, its name kind of comes from, literally, the kind of the, the motto saying, mission statement. mission statement of the library. So discover, inspire, grow. The grow part's going to be painfully obvious in a few minutes. 
Um, inspire kind of is inspired by the past, but not replicating it and not reusing it and not pretending to be it. And then discover is just kind of the aspect of, you know, as you go around a building, you see different things, there's places to walk in and around, and there's things used and invented in new ways. Um, particularly on materials, we're looking at this one, brick, ivy, the wood slats are used judiciously, and then uh, limestone. The particular one on this one is the, the materials are used, and again, it's shown white, so that you kind of focus on the massing and not worry so much about the material colors. Um, that the, the massing, go ahead and go to the next one. The massing and the materials kind of hook together so that the building transitions as it goes around and kind of starts to make sense. So this one somehow ended up a little bit in color, but the basically there's some towers kind of at either end that are limestone. And they begin to break up the verticality, but they're also at the points where there's limestone is always transitioning from one material to another. So it's either glass to brick, or um, and in a lot of most places it's glass to brick, but it also breaks up the, the elements. Site arrangement is basically the same. Uh, we have a little bit of a bump out there, but it's kind of understated and muted for an outdoor that our door space. It's also the program space, and all that grass area in front is the program area. Go ahead, Michael. So this is the Campbell Street view. Um, this was brought actually forward kind of as an inspiration from one of the very, very early design ideas that we had with the project. The uh, in the other buildings, we kind of took the third floor and we shrunk it in on all sides and kind of said, well, let's, let's try to kind of bring it in so it's not so noticeable from the road. But on this particular scheme, we took it out and we brought it and used it as a feature and kind of a lantern to this side. We heard a lot in the previous meetings that people didn't want this entrance to be just completely brought down to be a pedestrian back door entrance only, but they wanted it to have a little bit of a prominence to it. So we decided to take a little bit advantage of that and go ahead and bring that, that elevation up. Still has the kind of seven feet up to the floor, and then some upper area for great lights, hanging artwork, anything, a number of that, uh, those items like that. As you go to the uh, left, I'll talk about, uh, right, I'll talk about that in the, the, the next slide. The one thing I want you to notice, and you mentioned a little bit about kind of like a little, you, I know you're talking about edgy, but like a little bit of playful because I recognize on this one that this is very linear and kind of a hard, hard line kind of scheme. Those slats that are down here, we're using them and kind of zigzagging them back and forth. Those are basically your floor lines. So if anybody's ever seen a building that's got glass floor to ceiling, mm -hmm. they take the floor and it goes right up to the glass. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't want to look at the edge of the floor and you don't want it the HVAC in the structure, so you put a fake glass panel in there. Mm -hmm. well, what we're doing is we may put a metal panel back there, but we're kind of hiding that with these slats that may kind of look like pickets. They may give a little bit of presence on the floor up and from the ceiling down to kind of diffuse that edge a little. Um, they also get a chance to bring a little bit of color into it as well. And then, um, go ahead and go to the next slide since we'll talk about the Campbell Street site. So if you remember on that first slide, there were these vertical ivy elements. These on the other side though, are kind of vertical elements of kind of judicious placement of windows and fairly large windows so that we can allow the views to kind of come into the building as need be and then use those vertical pieces in the top to provide a little bit of privacy shading and bring it back a little bit. This is the north side, uh, so there won't be a whole lot. This is the ivy on that end doing the same thing as it did before as a way of kind of hiding the, the looper. Feel free. Um, it looks like you're actually going to have to do are they, just they are there. Okay, so they're built in there somehow that we just don't see them yet? Yeah, so this, there's actually, you can't see it on in this particular one, but some of the other ones, there's a door from the stairwell hidden. The, the next slide I'll tell you in a minute, but there's another stair there. So this particular one, like, there's an emergency stair here and there's an emergency stair there. And then interiorly, I, I don't know, I didn't ask this hours ago. Are there stairs, what's the access once you're in the middle of the library? How to go up and down. You almost because of how we have to kind of make sure that people are moving through the library in a controlled way that they can be supervised. The lobby is your kind of main area of going up and so down. There's an elevator there as well. Okay. You don't tend to let people just kind of go to any of the emergency stairways just so you can kids yeah, run off no, the I'm control. I'm thinking about is there a middle of the library access up and down? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So then on the left side, on the right side there are just kind of some ideas about how the aesthetic of the building might come together with being more kind of kind of industrial of sorts, keep going back to the old industrial railroad spur, exposed steel, wood trim pieces, 
um, lots of glass, but because one of the advantages of glass is kind of at the night, the, the building won't be lit up like a lighthouse, but you know that, that those windows begin to kind of show what's going on on the inside of the building, and then can kind of softly kind of transform the building at night to be a, give a little bit of a different look. Yeah, I think that aesthetic you see here, and then really on the other side of the building where this is more, this is the side that faces the neighbors. Um, yeah. So that side is much more closed off so that it's respectful to the neighbors. It's also because that's, we don't need as many windows on the side because that's where we got all those little small rooms and everything else. Go ahead. So then west elevation, to answer your question, that's one of the emergency exits. <laughs> also happens to be the staff entrance. Um, and then so the, the tower, and you can see it here, this is one of those towers there, and this is that tower in front of it. So that as the brick wraps around here, it hits that that stone limestone tower, and then afterwards becomes glass as it comes across. Now, what we've done in this one, and in reference to your question, John, those vertical pieces with the ivy on it, they're about two feet away from the window. So they're meant to provide shading during the summer. When the leaves fall off, they can let some glass move, or some light move in through the glass through those openings. And yes, it will require some maintenance. You know that. <laughs> But they're not directly attached to the building, so they can't go anywhere more than sideways. And then they stop because they're not connected to anywhere else. So in theory, they're trimming the ground and they're trimming the top. So, so then as you move around, again, that, that kind of vertical back and forth here is picking up as a line that runs all the way around the building. So it starts to tie these elements and these sides together with the use of the two. And this is the meeting room on this end. It actually has a divider wall right in the middle so that you can actually divide those two halves and come out on a plaza if you like. And we didn't point it out, but the, on all of these, there's a the playground that's being shown. So. Yeah. It looks like an entryway. Uh, that's the entrance. No. Yeah. This? Yeah. That's, the, that's the outdoor playground space for the, the youth program area. So there's a, there's a couple of doors there. On top of that right here is, the, uh, is an outdoor reading space. And one of the things we've actually been talking about, Michael and I were bouncing this back and forth the other day when we were kind of looking at it, is maybe that that gets a little more curvilinear as it comes out so that it breaks a little bit more of the hard lines. I had a question from one of the Yes. <laughs> The answer to that is yes. I've already called four different mill workers that are kind of trying to give me ideas. We're either looking at things from uh, representing it as cutting it, cutting it into pieces and use it potentially as a plank wall what on the, the inside. What was the question? What, the cotton wood tree? Are we going to use it for anything That's if it comes down? Good question. And then we're also looking at what we can do with furniture for it. But because it's the particular kind of tree, we want to make sure it works well and it's lasting and it does what it needs to do, so we're trying to find the right use for it. So we called a number of people to ask it. Good question. Thank you. Make the mantle to the fireplace. We talked about conference room tables, you know, all sorts of things. We talked about a, uh, Bob had an idea of, of, of uh, being able to trace the rings to Geneva history. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. that's I, there's a neighbor that lives here that I think I inadvertently already <coughs> promised a cross section about six inches oh. thick. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but I might have done that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that on a sticky note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we're getting it, but. <laughs> on the first. Um, it's a fundraiser. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing, the first, um, on the bridge, you showed an area over the meeting room to. Thank you for reminding me. Is it also on the other three? So Nobody on, else mentioned that. Yeah, I didn't, it is on this particular one. The other ones, no, they, they're taking, they're going to be using kind of the ground plane for that area, but not an elevated one. If you go back one slide, I think. One more. You can see a peak of it there. So this box right here is kind of like a three-season room idea of the same thing. So it kind of gets built in because, again, that box is kind of transitioning this brick to the glass again. So we use that vertical one. Uh, the meeting room is right there. So which concepts have that actual outdoor reading space? They all have a outdoor reading space. 
so, some of them have them in different places, kind of or vertically different or different levels, okay. but they all have some sort of outdoor reading on the south face, and they all have some sort of outdoor reading in that area. Option one kind of has an upper low and a lower one. This one will have an upper lower one, but the difference is that one actually, this one is roofed over with kind of an open screen porch type idea, but on the upper level. Shaded reading area. Kind of, yeah, shaded reading area. And they all have, um, on the ground level too, I mean, it's just not developed here, it's just showing as grass, but if you remember the site plan, they all have spaces there for the literary garden, yeah. you know, this one. One of the things this option does that the other ones don't do is this one pulls the corner of the building a little more away from the 6th and Campbell site. So it gives a little more green space over to outdoor seating, kind of a plaza, more room for Nick Bottom that we have on the other here. Mm -hmm. Craig, would it be possible to go back to the four and show where the outdoor, the bridge one is obvious where that outdoor reading area is, everybody gets that one. But on embrace and books. So I can I can can these see kind of well enough yeah, yeah. on these? Yeah. So on the bridge, outdoor reading right here. And then the outdoor reading is just on this side on the Campbell uh, mm -hmm. Sixth Street side. This one here, this one peels the wall out a little bit and becomes creates a space for outdoor reading up on this top area. The reading on this side is on the ground level. Mm -hmm. This option here. has just the lower level so it doesn't and this one doesn't have an upper level reading space as of right now but again we're here to listen to options and if people go we really really want that outdoor reading on the south side then we'll start to look at how to kind of incorporate it this one's all ground level right and then this one here this box bump out that you were talking about earlier that what is that little piece has outdoor reading here and then this large box the corner of it's kind of cut away to have a screened in porch type reading area. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Is there like outdoor eating too? Is there like a Where's our coffee going? <laughs> well, that's an interior question. <laughs> there will be coffee. There, there, there's a similar idea for handling coffee like they're handling it upstairs. Right now it's kind of a serve-as-you-go cafe space. But there will be coffee. Well, and, There's a few people that would hurt me if we didn't have some sort of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. People bringing lunch there, they could eat out. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, they're big enough for that. Mm -hmm. For what? Maybe when I go back to the floor plan slide, yeah. it's very early. Yeah. Here we go. But, yeah, they're, they're intended to be large enough for, in, in particular, this option here. This, this is pretty sizable. I mean, that's like, that's like a quarter of the block length. You know, yeah. south side yeah. space south side. to sit and eat. And read. I mean, that study, study show that's where you sit, right? You most likely will go to the south side. They'll go to the south side. They'll put up their chairs, right? right? Depends on the year. If it's too hot and glary because you're trying to work on a computer outside, right. then you may go to the other the other kind of cover at Eastern Indian. So we did there? have it in the past in the north side one, but we got rid of that because we didn't think too many people use it. It's harder to maintain as a human. There were a couple of questions about operations. One, Susan, I think you asked about where the stairs are the main yeah. up and down. So you come in through the lobby, either from the pedestrian side or from the park parking lot, and you come into a lobby, and there'll be some kind of stairwell, dramatic, um, you know, not a tucked away stairwell, but a nice grand staircase that goes up to the second floor as well as the elevator. And what that allows you to do when you're talking about the uh, community connections piece and how that's a priority is it allows, when you get to a floor, you have this opportunity to interact with the staff person right away and not have to go find them mm -hmm. if you came in from some other place. And so when you come up here, you know you can come right into an area where you, where you would have a service desk right away. You know I can never. Don't look at it. Don't look at the <laughs> So that was the question about circulation, but then uh, the question about uh, coffee and, and eating area. Um, all right, I'll use it. Uh, this area here, this is shown with this line here, but I think this is a little bit older of a floor It's plan. just kind of wide open there. It just yeah, looks like a wall. This is an top. open area here, and this is where the cafe-like area is going to be, where there would be coffee and tables. And it looks small, but it's really 
previous year. Does it have lighting? It looks as though the, there's not much in the line of windows there. Which would be a nice On most of the options, that's a lot there. of glass. Just yeah. There. Yeah. Right. yeah. But I don't think we should dedicate a huge cafe. No, it's um, just a place kind of where place you can sit with, with a book. Right, absolutely. And so this is right when you come in. So perhaps if you're waiting to pick somebody, waiting to get picked up, or if you're waiting to meet somebody, it's a nice place right off the lobby. If you're waiting for a program to start or waiting for somebody to come out of a program, it's a nice spot for you to, you know, sit with a book, drink your cup of coffee. It's also, as you walk in, if you want to move on to upstairs or to the kids' area, you grab your coffee on your way in and keep going. Instead of having to, you know, wind your way through the building. With covered cups. With covered Which are already allowed everywhere in here. So all of you, if you don't know, there's coffee upstairs, covered cups. <laughs> One dollar donation, we ask. <laughs> and uh, you're welcome to take it anywhere in the library. So, I don't know if there are any other questions about the operations. This might have been answered several meetings ago. But why is there not a basement involved if we're thinking about expansion? That, I know we can't build up because of the school, but a basement? So we have have in the plan, we're just not showing it, but a, a um, small basement area that right now is being um, kind of dedicated to the Friends usage. So right now Friends uses this whole space to kind of stack and get books and prep them for all the sales and everything they do. So we're building under the, you got it, kind of under, under that area, a small. The issue with the basement is one, there's water table potential concerns. Um, we're, we've got to haul a lot of soil away to be able to do it. So it's not as always as cost effective as one might think it is. But we're using it judiciously for kind of, kind of storage and slash for uh, actual flexible use right now. And it can only be so big where i got to have second exits and everything else in it. Yeah. There's also very few people who volunteer to go in the basement. No, I understand. <laughs> if you don't have to do it, it's really nice to, to have the um, Right. Every floor be you know yeah. naturally lit. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if this room had a window or two in it? <laughs> 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 You're Las Vegas down here, you have no idea what time it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm really surprised at the amount of glass that's being used in all the buildings. Could you give us some education on the type of material and glass and you know why it's not going to burn up our books? And, because I know of other libraries that went glass. Now they're probably 20 year old buildings, but. They said it ruined their materials, et cetera, et cetera. So the plain glass, is it treated it, glass? It's, it's treated glass. It's definitely tinted. All the options, and one of the ones we'll be looking at, will have, I think one of them has like the screening in front mm -hmm. to kind of cut down on that. The fourth option has the kind of the, the ivy, and we will be looking at some horizontal shading members mm -hmm. as well. Uh, we're also investigating glass materials that can actually kind of change their like transition lenses they can kind of do that frit will help somewhat right. for that as well so we are very cognizant of that concern Good, okay. and, and and today's glass materials right. are high performance glass right. materials but it's not just a sandwich insulated panel anymore right. uh, it's, there it's is. designed it's designed for the purpose yeah low e argon glass blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> yeah after looking at these four presentations, mm -hmm. I am so surprised at how wonderful each and every one of them is. Thank you. I would be hard put to pick out one. Well, it's a good thing we're not asking you to. <laughs> <laughs> they are all fantastic. Thank you. You all did a beautiful job. Yeah. I think you put us. I think we Speaking should be happy. for somebody who lives to across the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to see it. As for a section with the wood now. She don't not. She's not the one I promised it to, but it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> you might not be making anything. Right. There'll be sections of wood all over Geneva. Well, just apropos of that, um, at Tech Farm when they were mm -hmm. uh, doing the vegetable garden, mm -hmm. it was a if you volunteered, you uh, all made a donation, you could get a piece of the wood, you know, with all the elements that were chopped down. Oh. We incorporated a huge amount of that wood into Hot Hollow, if you don't know Hot Hollow and Hot Um And then we sold and gave away um, 
chunks of round, not from the trunk, well, maybe from the trunk, but limbs in the, it said on there, you know, like arm, mm -hmm. and you can, so another way to maybe get some payback out of that tree and get some donations and papers and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How will the selection be made? Say that one more time. How will the selection be made for the future direction? Mm -hmm. So at this juncture, um, we, we presented these options to HPC last night. Mm -hmm. you know, so there's a lot of things we're balancing here. We have to comply with HPC. Uh, we want to respond you know, to citizens and, and, and patron concerns and, and, and input. Um, but the board will be the last group that we'll be meeting with in detail to represent these one more time. Mm -hmm. And so based on what we've heard at HPC and what we've heard tonight, we're going to start you know, kind of determining the, the important elements and then begin to start driving that towards a, a final solution that will probably look like none of these individuals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the hope is you find some, like we'll hear, oh, I like this, so that, or I, I think there's two horizontal, let's say. So we start looking at the various options and how do we handle something being horizontal if that was felt that it was too horizontal. So it's a comment. It just occurred to me, there, none of these have a roof that does this. We live in snow country. Mm -hmm. And we live with ice damping. For those of you who don't want to we have ice damping. So on commercial buildings, because we have the ability to heat the internal piping, it's preferred to bring the water into roof drains and down through mm -hmm. the building so that we can maintain positive flow as opposed to a slope. And, you, you know, and also, you know, when you start putting a slope roof on a three-story structure, um, can you, let's go back to. Maybe that's what I'm missing. When you talk about the historical. Well, if you look circle. at that one that looks sort of like a warehouse from the uh, from the South Street, it's the Hansel. Just feel that So this is the uh, you know these were all flat structures. You know there's a couple right. of, of structures here. And this, the uh, when it, when when that building was renovated, I think I have one. I think it's on one of your side ones. Was on one of my side. Yeah, ones? on one of the side ones on one of yours. Right. right You'll notice that Wheeler put a, a monitor. Right, right, right. On on that on the lumber uh, uh, mill. So um, this would be, and again, this is really probably a two and a half story building, and we have a three story building represented as a one-and-a-half-story building. Starting to introduce this kind of residential forms, um, we just didn't think it was appropriate for more of a civic building. And if we looked at them in some of our earlier um, kind of presentations, I, I, really, really early, yeah, yeah, yeah. they were not generally well accepted by people. So It, it, it also increases the height, and the space is, is relatively unusable. Because it's really added. So stone isn't an issue? No, no, no. no. And I think you can see here that, you know, the idea of a monitor up here is very much recalled in this third floor. You know, it's that idea of that higher space with white coming in. So our, our next step is to um, um, present to the board in a board workshop and kind of review all the comments. Um, but I'm happy to report, though, we did have similar comments uh, to HPC last night that they felt that this represented this, the history, uh, was complementary to the historic district because, again, this is a contributing site. Um, so we're very pleased that at least we were, were kind of in the right ballpark and moving in the right direction. Yeah, I think one of the, one of the great things is both from the, the um, HPC, HPC and from this group, nobody has said, oh, no. We can't do that here. I think there's been general agreement that, that each one of these schemes has, has something of quality about it and has taken many of the, 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 the really important things into consideration for the site and the context. Yeah. Sorry you said that. Yeah. <laughs> I think the bridge scheme is awful, how cliche. So we have a bridge over the Fox River. So we're going to have a bridge on the south side of the building. I don't get it. That, that's fine. Well, you know, 
he doesn't like the, the the bridge, and I don't. I, for instance, I don't like the. Um, the I guess I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like that that view from Seventh Street in right. the in the in the uh, bridge scheme. Okay. However, um, this this view here to me is you know it's a nice. 30s uh, mm -hmm. modern look, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that that's probably the most interesting facade of them all. Right. Even though I don't, if that folks it, can't see it, I think Trish was referring to this yeah. one. Right. So yeah. I like yeah. that facade, but I don't yeah. like right. Right. other right. aspects. Right. So, so maybe the idea of more of that has okay. come around the building that's rather right. than that's changing to, to, to an arch. Because mm -hmm. that view that to me is really awesome. Which one? I which one it is. One has a lot of glass on the one side. Is this the book? It reminds me of Lombardi's High School. We used to call it the factory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the glass. Wow, the two. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, no, it's good. Oh, it's, it's good. It's good. Was it on, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the whole conversation on, on the books. The books, where it's all glass. It reminds me of High School and Lombardi, they call it the factory. Over in here. On the south elevation? Yeah, okay. oh, south it's just elevation. so much fun. Right. Isn't that on the last one, too? Are you referring to the last one as well, Mark? No, it's both. Yeah. Yeah. This has a little bit more The last uh, one is character. the one that's up on the screen right now. Okay. Yeah, but it's all glass. I, I like that. But it's broken up with it's ivy. It's broken up a little bit. Okay. This one is all glass. Well, that, 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 that will be part. That will be part of the discussion going forward. Now. So I, I think um, you know, as Michael was saying and, and Pat was saying, all of this is going to be considered by our trustees, which are all in the room here tonight. Bob, I don't know if you want to talk at all about that, but um, you know, if you to to the point earlier, if there's something that you like specifically or don't like specifically, being able to share that feedback is is really wonderful, so that this group can can take that and do something with it. Uh, I have left my business cards at the back of the room, so you are all welcome to share any thoughts that. You know, when you're laying in, in bed tonight trying to fall asleep and all these ideas are, are swirling through your head, feel free to reach out to me and share the information and I will share it with, with the team and with the board. So, I, I just wanted to, one last slide. <coughs> you know, I think it, when I talked about the, those three components in the very first uh, uh, discussion and presentation, you know, this is an ongoing cycle of change, modifying change. And so all of these things, you know, from the plans to the elevation to some of the, uh, the, the, the systems, they all have to be incorporated. They're all being reviewed, modified as, as the project goes forward. So all of the input that everybody gave, the idea of how this building really should respond to the public is going to be incorporated uh, into, the, into the design. May I ask a question? Sure. Um, I'd like to know from the designers how um, this building says it's 2020. To me, it looks as though it relates to anything from 1930 to about 1980. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's what people want. Uh, you know, everything around here is sort of retro. Well, yeah, and I don't think we heard at uh, HPC last night, what's old is new again, and, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody said, uh, I was oh. referencing ties. And that was me. I was accusing my son of wearing so ties and all his life. I was just interested in right. answering that. Right. And I know you've been talking about, you know, um, cast in place concrete and that sort of thing. And cast in place concrete, they were doing cast in place concrete in the 70s and earlier. Well, in 1906. Right, right, right. So that is not something new, either. So I think that I think that the 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 combination of what's going on inside the building and what goes on outside the building is a new approach. Is a new is a new idea in terms of how the library um, works. You no longer, if you remember back, we talked about 
you know, one area dedicated to stacks, one area dedicated to staff, another area dedicated to other uses. There's a, there's, a, there's a high range of flexibility inside the library. And I think that the, the exterior is responding not necessarily to every very particular need, but a general need in terms of the orientation of the design. So for the future, it can respond uh, internally to the demands of the library. And the external, the, the exterior envelope is set up to accommodate that as well in terms of uh, so light. you're saying it's a new interior but an old uh, well, feeling exterior. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, don't, I guess what I would say, Michael, is, you know, when we're talking about terracotta, we're talking about metal panel, we're talking about printed glass, we're talking about high performance glass, we're not talking about materials that were used in that. We're talking about materials that are, are produced today. For instance, terracotta is actually hung off the grid system. There's no, there's no mortar, so it doesn't have the same look as a terracotta building that was done in the 1920s, right? So I think part of the, part of the balance here is form, scale, and material. And materials are representative of what's happening here in the 20, you know, 21st century. And that's really the, the distinguishing feature. What Michael's describing is 100% is, is on, the, on the money, and that is that we are balancing what you see on the outside and kind of what you want the building to look like to what's actually going to be experienced on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know some of these opportunities for outdoor reading areas or, or um, porches or um, you know some of the, the, the sun shading elements, those are all really kind of working in tandem with what's happening inside the building. So I mean, that, I would argue that, that the building is going to be representative Primarily in material and form, but again, it's a it's got to fit into what the HPC is giving us the framework for. It's got to fit into what everyone is is giving us this evening. But I would say probably that's the most the single most important aspect. Two hands up. Uh, in looking at each one of those uh, interior space, Balio looks differently. You know, this one piece here on the bottom looks like it is only many more square feet to that one that building than to another building. Uh, what kind of consideration are they all to, are they all going to be approximately the same? They're story? all approximately the same. The only thing that really changes on option four is the kind of the stair tower lobby pushing kind of pulls away from the curb. That's so it's just that it be it kind of represents a little they do when you're trying to print them on boards they change size a little bit. Okay. You know? Because if I if I made this at the same scale that the long one is on it, this elevation would be like this big. You know, if it was the same good representation of a person being six feet tall, approximately they are all approximately the same. Yeah. Another question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, my son has a question, more of a comment. Kind of, we were talking about like how the <coughs> building looks old, or like on some of these designs and all the materials being used. And I think we kind of already touched on it with like the terracotta new materials, but in my opinion, personally, I think as we use like some of the more ivy and glass and limestone, you kind of incorporate these different materials that come together. It makes it look newer, and the more glass you have, but you can kind of hide it with the ivy, it makes it more forward thinking. Just because like, as I look at like the courthouse buildings and some of the other ones where it's just brick, and it's like screaming brick at you with nothing else, and I think that's, that looks old to me rather than if you kind of incorporate some of the limestone and um, I'm kind of going all over the place here but my final comment would be that I think just the structure itself of it can change the way whether it looks old or not so if you have different levels and different like cantilever things it looks newer than if it's just front like a box yeah, yeah. box uh, yes. right. mm -hmm. okay in various ways to create different patterns and so on, you get a more unified look. And so, you know, I, for instance, 
much as as limestone is a traditional building material from our 19th century past, you know, it's it's all, it, it's not structural, it's fake, and it's expensive. So I would like to see an innovative use of a, of, of a modern material, save some money there, mm -hmm. is being creative with that, and right. using, the, using the money saved uh, for more, Decorative de design features inside, if it's going to be built, if it's going to be materials, whatever. Because to me, the limestone is an honest. So, so, so you're in favor of fewer modern materials, used creative, right? Used in, in, a, in a way to so that you can you can communicate scale, you can communicate all those things oh, you yes, normally chain, do you know. in, in, in with other materials. Correct. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I, I wrote. I wrote uh, simplified materials, um, and I agree with you. I, th I think that you know part of the study of this is to bring in a whole bunch of pieces, kind of see what sticks, what doesn't. Remember, these are studies; these are not final designs. And it's you know when you're sitting there with with you know paper and pens and markers and computers, you know you're trying to think of what all these things can be. And I think what we want to do is kind of bring a palette because they're all similar palette. But I agree. I think being more playful with the material will probably make these things look a little more exciting. And I think that certain schemes show a certain level of exuberance, and other ones show a certain level of restraint. And finding that that perfect perfect line between the two is really a challenge, and that's part of what this is. This is about. I just yeah. had a quick question or observation on the first one, the bridge. You kind of have that farm element, right. of the tree. Right. Didn't really see it on the other mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. Right. Just wondered if there was a way to add more of something. Right. Like that. Right. Something unique. Something but not unique. where it's going to go in, you know, 10 years. Feel kitschy right. or something. Yeah. yeah, and then that was, that was, I was picking up earlier and, and mentioned it. Like, we talked at one point in time on the fourth option of doing something to kind of break up that mass and make it a little more fun of sorts. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a good point is that maybe some of the others need a little more whimsy, as we call yeah. it. Right. You know, right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I, don't, I came in late, so I don't know if anyone mentioned this, but that's the, the, the same kind of echoes Colonel Fabian's um, River Bank Lab. Yeah. Which one? The one. The one that looks like the that. The wedding cake one. The <laughs> one on the, the west side of the, uh, mm -hmm. the, west side of yes. the Yes, I think it kind of echoes it. So I think that kind of makes it look a little bit more Geneva. Which one? The, the, on the west side of uh, 31. Oh, the bridge. Um, the bridge? Yes. Yeah. The bridge. Kind of, it doesn't oh, look like right. it, but it represents it. No, but you're right. I like it. Well, that's a fun story. Well, I wanted to thank everybody, especially oh, these people, okay. especially people who sat through three of these. Oh. I really appreciate your input. And turn it over to Bob and let him have some last remarks. Yeah, again, uh, I'd like to add the board's thanks for those of you who have sat through three of these. For those of you who just came tonight, again, thank you for your input. Uh, we will take that. We'll continue to, to gather any thoughts you might have after tonight. Uh, Christine offered her uh, as a point of contact. Also, you can uh, send anything by email to board at gpld.org and we'll make sure that gets the d design team. They'll continue to iterate these and we'll start to hone in on one uh, final design and as was mentioned, the board will be making that final decision utilizing all this input that we've got. So. It's not inappropriate. <clears throat> I'm just an ordinary citizen but I've written a memo on this topic. My concern is largely with the parking lot. I'm a complete agnostic concerning these four designs. But as you leave, if you'd like a copy from me, I'll be at the door. Okay. Hello? Will these um, designs, well, what we saw tonight, will that be on the website if you want to go look again? So we will be, we've been recording the uh, session tonight. And uh, when that was, to say, probably about two, three days. Oh, it should be ready by late tomorrow. Okay, late tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have the whole presentation on our project website. So.
Uh, feel free to share them with, with any of your friends and neighbors, too. And, and again, people are, you know, you're welcome to give con uh, feedback to me that I'll share with the team. Thank you very much. Again, thank you very much. For that.